Welcome, Spartans, to Halo TV Plus, part of Evolved, your home for Halo. I'm your host, Oren, and on Halo TV Plus, my guests and I recap Halo's original TV show, Halo the Series, and we discuss its contents and unique canon within the Silver Timeline. Joining me tonight is Krista Brown. Welcome to the show. Hey. Hello. Hey. How you feeling? Uh, we're going to watch a TV show. I got some hard Mountain Dew. Uh, nice. And some water to balance it out. And you know what? I'm ready to watch some Halo. Yes. We're going to be covering the third episode. As you know, Halo TV Plus publishes a commentary podcast episode and an analysis podcast episode to accompany the Halo TV series episode each week. This is the commentary episode where Krista and I will watch episode three, Emergence, and discuss the events as they unfold on screen. We encourage you to watch along with us, the listener. If you haven't watched the episode yet, I recommend that you watch it before listening to us as we spoil scenes before they happen, while they happen, and kind of talk about the whole episode, you know, in addition to what's on screen. We're actually going to talk about all of the events that happen in the last episode of the series, (laughs) because we've seen it, so... uh... (laughs) Don't tell them that. But, uh, right, this will be, you know, heavy spoilers for the first three episodes of the TV show. But uh, if you're sticking around, go ahead and start queuing up the episode while I take us through some housekeeping. Hooray. If you're new to our show, welcome. Halo TV Plus is part of Evolve that hosts a variety of other Halo shows like Podcast Evolve, Mission Debrief. Shout out to Krista, who goes over there. Oh my goodness. Builds with Blocks, Halo Boat Club, and Halo Headlines. Evolved also partners with the podcast HCS Pro Talk, where Josh and Will discuss the latest information within the competitive Halo scene with an emphasis on community every week. You can learn more about all of those shows on our website, evolvedhalo.com. As Halo TV Plus is a new show, I ask that you rate it and leave a review. I greatly appreciate all the feedback and suggestions from you, the listeners, to improve the quality of this show. We would like to take a moment to thank all of our patrons for their continued support. Your contributions allow us to continue making new content like this show every week. Thank you guys so, so much. If you're not already subscribed, our patrons receive a variety of exclusive rewards, such as early episodes, unique swag, access to our podcast soundtrack, and more. You could head over to patreon.com slash Halo Evolved to learn more. All right, Krista. All right. Before, let me introduce the episode. Uh, The synopsis of episode three, Emergence, says, John meets his new partner and discovers secrets in his own memory. Quan wants to continue her people's fight for independence, but Soren has other plans for her. And then McKee, McKee's plan to retrieve the magical object has deadly consequences. This episode is directed by Roel Rene. It was premiered on April 7th, 2022, and its runtime is 54 minutes and 28 seconds. All right, that's about it. Are you ready? Hey! I'm ready. Let's go. So if you're not yet queued up, just, you know, pause and queue it up. Make sure you're at zero, zero, zero. Yep. And then when you're ready, I'll count us down from five and everyone will play when I say play. I am ready. Five, four, three, two, one, play. Yeah. Yeah, we did it. We pressed a button. You pressed the button. So, Christo, right now we're watching the last week on Halo. You weren't with us last week on Halo TV+. Plus. So what did you think about episode two, Unbound? I liked it. Um, I definitely was interested in the introduction of Soren. That was really, really interesting. I like how he, I like how he plays into this story. I think when we heard that Soren was going to be in the Halo TV show, it was kind of... I, I think we just assumed... a different kind of Soren was going to be in here, but this one's really cool. He's still like, hey, I'm a G still. We're cool. What's up? I love it. (laughs) Yeah, I I, I like how his, you know, he's a, he is a Spartan because he, he went through the augmentation and everything, but because he just acts so much differently than what we are usually seeing Spartans do, it, it really makes his character just that much more unique. And, and that's what really draws me to his character is that he's just completely different. And I was not expecting it to be like that. And I'm I'm really into it. 
What did you think of the crackhead guy? So, Reth, I... <laughs> it's us, it's, it's us, it's the Halo fan base. It is the Halo fan. It's just like, this is the, these are the answers you need to know. <laughs> but as, the Lord! As, <laughs> the Lord! He know, he, see, he read the, the Forerunner saga. He knows what's going on. Shit, yeah, he read all... The, that was me after I read all the books. <laughs> you didn't brush your teeth for, for years. And crawled around on the floor. Yeah. So, um, yeah. In in short, I I liked him as as like a purpose, but I I feel like he kind of gave a little too much information. Um, but uh, but in in part, I do like him. But uh, but anyway. Um. All right. Well, we have our beginning of the episode. We are at Oban, which is a. It was just described to us as a. What was it? A, a waste containment planet? Just garbage planet. Yeah, it's literally a garbage planet. Like, I actually had that same thought and chuckled at myself. It was like, garbage planet. And um, yeah, stuff's just falling out of the, si- out of the uh, sky here. But I really like this set. Like, I think this is, um, again, like the, the, the sets that these, um, you know, designers and fabricators and set dressers are like, creating are very impressive like and i don't remember ever being like this impressed with like nightfall or you know before on a dawn had a little bit of it but like then each new place that we go to is just so filled with i don't know junk or debris and character it really brings it all to life they definitely nailed the halo aesthetic like every single um set and place that they go to feels halo-y right it's like ah uh, yes yeah. this is halo yeah, it, it definitely, even like the, the ship interiors and just, yeah, everything I've seen so far has just been like, oh man, that's just so interesting. And, and, and it really harpens to what we've seen in the games or read in the books. Uh, so yeah, still still very impressed with uh, the production design and art direction. You were out ready show. to watch some 10-year-olds kiss? Yeah, this was, so I, I wonder if this is a, <laughs> the, for this shot, the super close-up shot, if that's like a like mannequin or something because like i don't even know if you can let kids kiss i don't know they did it in stranger things i guess so that was like those kid, those kids first kiss too was <laughs> on a set with a bunch <laughs> of cameras <laughs> oh gosh that must be so weird how do you get the job to beat children <laughs> yeah i beat that's... kids job and it's just like I don't know, like the, the whenever there's a, like a what is it authoritative or or utilitarian sort of like government that imposes itself on these civilians, it's like they always just like beat people to death, and it's like I feel like you're just making more problems for you. Like I, I now you like have to like dispose the of the of body. What you want to yeah. happen, you know? You want you want them to like the government at least a little bit, right? Yeah. But we get we get our two elites that have come down and like the guard, I guess, even though aliens are coming, still took the time to uh, to kind of zap McKee. Of course, this is a young McKee. We haven't said that, but this is what we we learn in a moment with the book that she's reading. And <laughs> this uh, guy spends his this guy sees the aliens come down. And he's like, you know what? I'm gonna spend the last moments of my life beating this kid, beating these children. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, I know exactly. I love the. I love. Um, is that the arbiter, or is that just his uh, armor? So it, it's it's unclear, and and this I don't know. To me, it just seems like it's another Sangheili. I don't know if it's the Sangheili that we meet in episodes one and two. We don't know who the arbiter is, kind of yet. Like I feel like there should have been some sort of like insignia on the the elite's armor, so then we could know like who that character is down the line. Because right now. You know, we don't really know who he is. You know, that's that's why, like, all the Spartans and stuff, they have the numbers on their on their chest, so then we, the audience, can keep track of everybody because they largely look the same. I mean, maybe they're just not important, so maybe, and that that could be true as well. Maybe they're just they're just saying Healy, and so we don't need to have any sort of like important distinction to them. We just need to have them as the the alien purpose that they they kind of just serve. So. Do you think the Covenant give her the hair dye, and where do they get the hair dye? You know, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, 
They're like, your hair does, your hair cannot be brown. We're dyeing it icy white. <laughs> you know, all, all the prophets have uh, blonde or um, white hair. Maybe, maybe they have dye that, that she uses. <laughs> They're like, you gotta dye your and hair. And use, they use the same gel, you know, to keep their eyebrows that, you know, upright. That's, yeah, yeah. It's nice. It's like <laughs> mascara for your eyebrows. What do you think of the alien language? Oh, I think it's great. I think it's really cool. And like the way she like, she like smacks her teeth, oh, not her teeth, but like her, like the way she just structures her mouth to like say the different words and like the, the small little curls at the different ends of her mouth. Like she's almost like spitting the language out, but not in like a disrespectful way, just kind of just it's just a weird language that you just gotta like really enunciate and just get out like it's really it's uh what's the word i'm looking for it's um it's like guttural guttural yeah but it, it, she's just, she's just herself is very physical with it it's a very physical language to to kind of speak um and kind of how they designed it so i wonder how many times she had to redo scenes for the alien language oh probably a ton and yeah, I'm sure there was a dialect coach that was on set with her that was constantly, you know, rehearsing with her. And uh, bro, how do you become an alien dialect coach? That sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, I, I speak a language that doesn't even exist and I teach other people how to speak it. There you go. Yeah, it, it, she can't really... And she, but she needs someone else on set to talk to. You know, she can't really just go around speaking Sangheili to uh, to the other crew members. Yeah, she needs an interpreter. Um, but for to kind of recap that scene, you know, it, we just kind of get to see McKee still in the dominance role that she is to kind of take to go get the this artifact that now Miranda's looking at, and um, and yeah, I, I'm I'm happy that. And we see more of, of McKee in a little bit, but I'm pleased that like we're still getting a villainess type of character with her and not some sort of like damsel trying to escape that's being like put through this. Like she's really owning her actions and her place among the covenant, which I think well, they I should mean, definitely by just seeing that scene of her living on a garbage planet, she went from being like absolutely nobody to revered by this entire species so i don't blame her for just embracing the power yeah and then they no doubt you know are telling her how special she is and how um how her powers and her gifts and just feeding her all these pleasantries and then also probably feeding her how terrible humanity is because her only slice of humanity is garbage planet you know she yeah. doesn't travel and all that kind of stuff so yeah, yeah, I I totally buy it. I think it's, you know, you could you could push someone at a young age to do all that, so. Halsey's lab assistant is creepy and I don't like him. Bro, I the scene that you get with him later, I was I was all for. I was like, "Damn, that's that's some bold character motivation and like we'll get to it in a second, but like It's creepy. When, when, <laughs> <laughs> oh I my liked god, it. I was like, oh no, I don't like this guy. It turns him into just like more of like uh more of a character than just being Halsey's number two and just hit, like he's more than just handing her things. Like he has like an admiration for her and obviously like a a deep like love for her that he's not able to express ever, and we're able to see just a glimpse of that that we may not even get to see again. So I I really like that moment for how creepy it was. That Halsey has. <laughs> also, this puzzle that she's doing, I don't know if it's just me, but it really doesn't look that hard. Uh No, that that looks pretty easy. That looks like she's just assembling IKEA furniture. <laughs> <laughs> IKEA furniture could be hard though. It depends, it depends. It's like, you know, basic IKEA furniture. Yeah. I, I, so I'm actually going to kind of go back a little bit what I said before about being impressed by all the sets and things. 
I will say that I feel like Dr. Halsey's lab may be the one outlier to where I feel like her lab could have been better. And by better, I just mean that it, it to me, it's a little just too empty. And, and I don't know. I feel like she should have just like desks of just clutter and thoughts and, and things. Well, especially knowing Halsey, she's, she's um, all over the place. Yeah. And she has like a, you know, she has a journal, so we, we don't need everything to be digital, but, you know, I guess it it's just simpler if it all is, but I don't know. To me, I feel like her, 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 do- her laboratory is a little too large or not large, but empty. It is large, but it's, it's, there should be some more stuff in there, I feel, but it's, that's a small grape. I will cut myself off though, that this moment when she's like, if you were put into this position, you thought about it before and, you know, like, what would you do and why would you do it? Um, and you had some reservations, like, could you go through with like basically killing your clone and what happened? And she, she takes a moment to think and it's just as simple as like progress. Like we've, I've just made progress in developing these, these AIs and, and, and perfecting the technology to do what I wanted to achieve that, that, is more important than any sentimental feelings with like a clone because you're not me, even though you technically are me. Like, I don't know. I think it just helps shows Halsey's just like borderline animosity and just like willing, like tenacity actually, I think is a better word. You could see that she was a little taken back though. I mean, Halsey still has a conscious. She just is able to ignore it and be like, no, we don't think about that. I, I think it's interesting how they did represent the brain clone as just an actual, like, living clone. As opposed to, like, a test tube organism? Yeah, because, like, how it works in, how it worked in the original series is it was literally just a brain that she cloned. It wasn't an actual, like, full person. Yeah. Dude, Master Chief's on some good drugs. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of drugs in this episode. You got... <laughs> oh, yes. Perfect. Thanks. Perfect. You have the most... This is it. Uh... I was like... <laughs> He's like, all right, now that you're paralyzed. Yeah, exactly. That's what I love about it. Like, it's it's like... Like, not saying that, like, I condone, you know, this kind of, like, semi-rapey thing that he's doing, but, like, I don't know. Like, now I just have a better sense of who this guy is. Like, he's more than just Halsey's assistant. He's, like, I don't know. He has some three-dimensionality he's a, to him. Uh, he's an incel. <laughs> he's an incel. <laughs> did you Did you ever play, uh, gosh, what was that game? Um, Dead Space 2? Oh, yeah. Do you know what reference, like, everyone's talking about? I never played it, but online, all I heard people talk about was the eye? The eye thing. Yeah, it was, like, at the... I think it was towards the middle or the end of Dead Space 2, and it gave you, like, a vision of what to do next, basically. Oh, I hate this shit. I hate eye shit. Yeah, no, it's... it's, It was... It's a little hard to watch, even watching it for a third time. (laughs) See, look, she looks kind of sad. She does, but like, I think it's she's gonna just, do it anyway. It's okay. just enough to take her mind off of it and think about it. But this shit's the like gra- the greater super good. Super brutal too. Like the creation of Cortana is like super brutal in this. I like how the eye is dilating in that shot, or not dilating. It's like milk getting all milky. It's undilating. Whatever the getting bigger word is. Now, something that's different than in the games and the lore is that it seems that they're like attaching Cortana like into Chief's brain. Like, yeah. as opposed to the suit connecting to his brain and Cortana connecting through like that like this is she is like now becoming literally a a part of him almost like what 
Doc Ock was doing in Spider-Man 2. That's kind of the reference I kind of went to when I was watching Hell this. Yeah. Peter. I, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. Like, we see later that, that Cortana, like, can put him in stasis and can kind of control him to a degree. So Which I'm, is, like, I'm, kind, of, kind of the uh, entire purpose of Cortana was to control Chief. Right. It, yeah, it just seems to be more more controlling, and I'm just curious how much they're going to like explore with that, because you know that could get really hairy really quickly, and you have whole sci-fi shows and stuff that are all based upon like AI intelligence going haywire. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see where they take it now that they're establishing these kind of new rules. That's brutal. Just like all right, we used you now to dissolve the body in acid they could have harvested the rest of the organs i mean geez you're not wrong yeah it's per- perfectly good like liver in there oh, it was a it was a functioning halsey because it kept all the other organs in case she needed a transplant i know halsey could have just lived forever and then now you instantly forget about all that brutality and you're like oh look it's a blue lady oh All right. So, what are your thoughts of uh, of TV Cortana appearance? Uh, she treads the line in the uncanny valley, for me. Yeah. Yeah. Some shots she looks great, and some shots I'm like, oh. I think they turned her a little bluer than when we first saw her in one of the trailers. But it's uh. I'm I'm receptive to it. You know, I've I think I've I've finally crossed the threshold of just accepting whatever the TV show tells me is as the rules that it states and as as long as it fits within the reality of the show, then I'm otherwise accepting of it. Um Yeah. Cuz you know, C- C- Cortana's appearance has changed in literally every game. Um and so I have a no, I don't have a difficult time just accepting this is the new Cortana. Now, it, it is a little different just because this is probably the most human she's looked. And, but I don't think that's necessarily a negative. I like her outfit she's wearing as opposed to the like digital lines covering her naked body. Like, I like that she's actually, <laughs> you know, clothed. And, and yeah, clothed in a jumpsuit, like kind of like what the, the weapon had in Halo Infinite. Yeah, she does. She is. She does have that vibe. I do. It was really nice when she first talked to hear um, Jen Taylor's voice. It was like, yes, that was that was great. And yeah, and like, I don't know how, you know, Chief's voice is obviously different. But like, to hear Jen Taylor's voice, there is a like, a familiarity that just really hits, you know, the core fans, uh, you know, obviously us. Like, so, so I'm very happy that they were she was able to you know, come in and take over that. Yeah, it was re- it was the only, you know, voice actor from the Halo series that made sense on coming back cuz I mean, since Master Chief takes off his helmet, it doesn't make sense to have Steve Down's voice. I mean, that's just weird. Yeah. Dude, this place looks dope. This place, bro. So I- I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but like the after the, the like after show the declassified show shows like behind the scenes of like the set that they built here is like literally a long tunnel like the entire thing is one huge set and oh shit uh, like it's not like sometimes you can kind of cheat it and you could just build it in sections and you just walk across one and then you go to the next section and you walk across another part but like this entire like tunnel because it's like built in an asteroid is like just one huge ass set that I guess they built in like a sound stage or some other like hangar to like fit it all. But um yeah, I highly recommend people watch the uh the what is what is her name? Sydney Goodman, I think. It's in my notes somewhere. Um of her after the show for this episode cuz I think I think it's the best like interview with Charlie Murphy and best like behind the scenes with the director and the production designer the that we've seen yet so we talk about they talk about the costumes that these guys are wearing 
Like it's uh it's so great. Oh, the costumes are definitely good throughout the throughout this series. They're they're spot on. It's great. I like how Quan like she still has the blood from her friends like stained on her clothes. Like <laughs> she hasn't even like changed because that that's just I don't know. I, those are her clothes. I, I love those are her clothes, and it's it's a great detail that is carried over. They just never actually washed that actor's clothing. They're like, you're just gonna wear this <laughs> the entire time we're filming. What do you think of this side story with Madrigal? Um, I I I like it. In the sense that it, it's showing you a different side of the UNSC, because like for all the the like extended lore that we have that touches on the insurrection, a lot of it is just like oh we want to do our own thing and and kind of not be suppressed by or oppressed by the UNSC, and then we see the UNSC side of it, and it, it all just kind of cumul- cumulates cumulates until the Covenant eventually cumulates. show up cumulates yeah until it all until the covenant shows up and kind of just stops whatever problems that were going on but like potentially in this show like we're able to like just see a little bit more of like the conflict between the UNSC and the insurrectionists from like a political standpoint in a in a rebellion rebellion type of a uh, environment so i'm i'm excited to learn and see where it goes like i just i hope it's not just like a side story. I hope it like it gets the development that it needs. And we learn more about this Fishner character or Vis Visner and, uh, and kind of see where it goes. But I, I, it could, it could get a little hairy if they don't do it right. So I'm just, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about this, that, that sort of story. And I hope it gets like Soren into the fight, you know, maybe Soren sees something in, in the cause and he's able to, I don't know, do something a little bit more proactive instead of just being a pirate and hiding in his asteroid. Yeah, there's definitely going to be something bigger with that. Right now, it's just the least interesting storyline that's going on right now. True. I mean, I think that's kind of the third pillar of, of like these three things. You have Chief with Halsey and Cortana doing their stuff. You have McKee and her her plight. And then you have Quan and and Soren, and they're just, you know, doing their thing. So, yeah, hopefully it gets, you know, developed to the point that it needs to. Again, another great set, just like... It looks so good. I mean, like, this looks like something, you know, like, I don't know, it looks like, it reminds me of Star Trek and just, like, the games. Like... You know, I love this scene that's coming up. It's really cool, <laughs> dude. The Corvette looks great. Yeah, the sh- the ships is like, you know, the models and all that. The visual the visual effects on the show is is at a quality that it really needed to be to yes to kind of capture halo and it's the the, the sang shai hoon and the elites and now the ships like man i hope we can get a space battle like there has to be at least one space battle in this show like that'd be so dope help me i'm definitely f- a human doing human things they captured me. I'm on the super I, old radio. How so how old do we how much time do we feel like has passed for McKee? Like there there are hunter worms, which I think was a nice touch. She, she must nice... be at least in her late teens, early 20s, right? I mean cuz like I think let's see the um what was the flashback that we got? That was 22 years ago i think in episode two with soren and i wonder if they were fighting the covenant at that point 12 13 right i mean that's kind of the vibe yeah and she's she's definitely older than or sorry younger than chief 
So I think she's older yeah, maybe than she... Quan though. Oh yeah, well Quan is like sixteen. So yeah, maybe she was captured like ten or fifteen years ago, and now she's in her like mid twenties. Also, this pedestal thing looks like a camera dolly. Like, I don't know if we get a wide shot again, but just like when I saw that, I was like, that looks like a camera dolly with a artifact mounted on it. <laughs> well, they're not going to build a <laughs> fancy pedestal for the artifact. I'm very interested to see what happens in episode four with when they go when they go here. Because like. I don't know. I'm. I, I'm. I'm. I want. I want to see. I want to see like boot camp chief. Like, I want to see them being trained as a kid, going playing capture the flag and stunning each other with stun rounds. Getting captured. I believe it was last episode that they alluded to the fact that their memories got wiped, like f- actually wiped, instead of them just forgetting as kids. Instead of being like suppressed. I mean, like in. In the uh, regular timeline, they just, they never did anything with their memories. They just, you know, they're, they're, ki- they're kids. They just forgot, you know? Yeah, they just forgot what happened before they were five. Like, I barely remember what I did when I was five years old. I was probably just pooping. I don't know. Probably pooping and going to school and falling on the monkey bars. But, uh. <laughs> That's a good memory to repress. <laughs> Matt actually had a good question from last week where he wonders if Soren has memories if like before the Spartan program because if he does then it could be part of that pellet that they all have oh that they put in yeah it's yeah it'd be interesting to kind of see or learn if uh if Soren you know has those memories or not because then it's it means a little bit more. But if he also doesn't have his memories, then yeah, they definitely were very suppressed. So then what Chief is going through just makes it, I think, all that more remarkable since literally no one else is experiencing it. And then just coupled with the fact that this artifact is the thing that's kind of triggering the memories that he can't really recall them on his own. He has to... He has to get it from the... Well, the artifact is obviously just trying to tell him something. Right. Hello, I am human. I'm definitely not going to hurt you. Just don't touch my hair. (laughs) The hair dye is very sensitive. It's a great shot. And she just goes, she smiles, yeah. Ugh, the Lek Golo are so cool. She's just like, yes, I have tentacle monsters. (laughs) This is normal. It would have been interesting if, like, someone tried to, like, shoot her and, like, the let go of worms, like, got in the way somehow. Instead of, you know, everyone just completely ignoring her. <laughs> yeah, everyone's, well, I mean, I guess you would be more concerned with the let go than the girl that's just literally walking around. All right, so next question, another controversial question. What do you think of the finger blade, the energy finger weapon? Bro, I want one for all of my fingers. It looks like it just goes under your nail. It's great. I love it. Yeah. And I'm, I, I am curious if she has it on all of her fingers, that that's something that we'll, we'll see later to where she kind of just becomes... Like a ninja. (laughs) 
I mean, we've seen, like, small energy sword daggers and stuff like that, so I'm not surprised. I j it just makes me wonder, like, what else they did to her. Like, if they... If they're implanting these things under her nails, like what what else is she augmented with? You know, like where does it where does it stop? Where does it kind of escalate to? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I love that. Look at that shot. It's so good. Yeah, that's a great one. That's a good set. Bingo. Yay. <laughs> and these guys playing like 6D chess over here. It's like that Star Trek chess. <laughs> But I think it's it's kind of like yeah, what do Spartans do when they're not being Spartans? Like, and this this is this is it. They just, they just exercise their design. mind and just wait. Yeah, I want to see more of Silver Team. I'm a little disappointed that like at the end of the episode when when John Light like, goes off, that Silver Team's not with them. And I guess we'll learn and see what happens in f episode four, but. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is actually pretty good too. She just hi. She's just like hello. <laughs> He's like, oh no, my e girlfriend. You're not supposed to know about her. Be gone. <laughs> I like he how he treats her almost like just a piece of equipment, and she's like, no, nah, bro, I'm a person. I'm introducing myself. Yeah, Alexa, this is a good stop. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Siri, no, don't call that person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good, like, good look, moments. Look, I... we're just friends, I promise. Oh, dude, what if in episode four we get, like, a combat scene to where Chief has to, you know, learn to trust Cortana the same way that he had to in the in the book? That'd be Ooh. a really great moment. So what what about this storyline that doesn't quite excite you yet just because it's it's kind of slow developing or you just don't really care about the insurrection sort of Oh, uh, you know, the insurrectionists plight is just the least interesting thing, you know, with all the alien artifacts and covenant and stuff like that going around, the human the pure human interactions are just a little less interesting. That's fair. So Soren's wife, how the fuck, dude? Good job. <laughs> I do think this is a good contrast, though, to where she's basically saying she being um, uh, Soren's wife, who I'm blanking on her name Lyra Lyra um or she's like you know at the end of the day like the galaxy will move on you just you know live your life uh it'll it'll go on without you but uh obviously Quan doesn't feel that way so I think it's a good contrast of these two characters beliefs yeah and they're both valid I mean I I like the sit around drink and smoke though. That's that's that sounds better to me. <laughs> yeah. So would yeah. you would you go uh, escape your Spartan training, go live on the rubble? Yeah, that sounds way more fun. Is that what you're all about? Bro doesn't know how to use Google. Yeah, right. I'm curious, like, what he could be trying to do that it's just not 
working like well, he's trying I to just... find his home planet, right? Based off his right. memories. But like he he describes what it is to Cortana. It's like, well, if you didn't type what you just said, then what were you typing to prompt Cortana to be like, I can help you? That's what I mean. <laughs> planet in my memories. Yeah. <laughs> Dream planet. Planet. Dream with planet. White there dog. you go. Planet with white dogs. I wonder if these things, like, move, if they, like, close and, like, swing together. Oh, to make, like, a little these, like, table or something? Spartan pods. Well, that's what, that's what, in the background, it looked like those were closed ones, you know, for the other Spartans. I would say it's for privacy, but Spartans don't really need to access a phone privately. Yeah, they got nothing to hide. He's on some good uh, antidepressants. <laughs> yeah, that that palette really works wonders to completely suppress their. Uh... Uh, Gold timeline master chief just uses the magic of s memory suppression. Yeah. So here's your moment coming up. Yeah, the big here's peach. the moment. We get we get the nudity. <laughs> That's two episodes in a row with with booty booty nudity. Yeah. So yeah, who, we who get we girl gonna see booty, next? we get boy booty. This show's for everyone. Uh huh. All inclusive. I uh, I saw a pretty good joke on uh on the internet where it was like episode one chief removes his helmet, episode two chief removes his suit, episode three chief's just naked. So is it what is he gonna do in episode four? <laughs> yeah, he's removed everything. Like is he just gonna remove his skin? It's pretty Look good at knife. the close up shot on the butt. <laughs> Do you think uh, when they were uh, auditioning actors, they're like, all right, pull down your pants. We're looking for a specific butt to uh, put in that in this one shot. We just want to make sure your butt's up to par. I feel like they got down to like three actors after the whole thing. And they're like, all right, it's going to come down to the ass. Like, drop Strip. them. <laughs> and then they're like, that's our chief. <laughs> Those are the it's definitely the. um. The voluptuousness that we need, that that booty thick, dude. That, mm -hmm. She was peeping on him. <laughs> she she she's, was um, like completely. She naked. was peeping. She's like, damn. Everyone's looking at Chief's booty. What did you do do today, Master Chief? Oh, I took something out of my butt. <laughs> it was in his spine. Uh, I was near the butt, tailbone. <laughs> so this um i think is was a this sequence that we're about to embark on i really enjoyed him it's he's in his civilian clothes he he goes into the wild now you know without his his emotional pellet attached and he's literally experiencing the world the first time just like soren said like it's 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 like you just opened your eyes after being like living in the dark and everyone's like, are you okay? And he's just it's like, who's taking it all in. weird fucking guy staring at me? Like the sound design is just so well done too. Just like all the different environments coming in and flowing and fading in and out as he's focusing on one thing or another. It's a good, it's a good moment. Good sequence. 
Then also, it makes me wonder where they filmed all this. Like, again, these are these are pretty big sets. Like, a lot of extras. Yeah. <laughs> He's just like intensely staring at random people. <laughs> It's like, dude, come on, what are you, stop. I'm talking to don't, my girlfriend. Don't mind me. Don't mind me, I've never seen two people talk like that before. Do you think we're going to get the fall of Reach in this uh, season? Do you think we're going to see the Covenant attack uh, I Reach? I don't know. I feel like they're going to see the ring before Reach falls, but Reach has to fall eventually. And George has to die. He's not in George. this series, but... No, they'll introduce him just to kill just him to off. Just to kill him. <laughs> just, to, just to put a nail in it, you know? It's funny, speaking of George, like there is a there's a picture of George without his helmet off. And like the angle of it was like I saw it online, it kind of compared it to 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 Pablo Schreiber as John with his helmet off. And it, there was there's some similarities in there. It was like, yeah, these guys are just uh just people. Yeah. Chief confirmed dog lover. Shame. <laughs> I know. We all know kitty cats are better. Mm-hmm. Cats Imagine are just go. having like a pelican kitty cat that you come back to. You're like, this is my kitty oh, cat. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. There was just a, a condor cat. Yeah, a condor cat. This is my cat condor. He lives on the condor. <laughs> he lives on the condor. <laughs> this is completely like totally off topic, but have you ever seen that video where they put a cat in zero gravity? Yes, I have. There's a few of them. <laughs> yeah, like and they're completely around. freaking out. <laughs> uh, there is no ground for it to land its feet. I think that was Halsey that walked in the door there. Yeah. Which I I the hope coin. we get to see. Yep, the luck coin. Dad, why I did kinda, you, I why wanted did you to see... bury my forerunner artifact? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's just, it's just like a suppressor or like a binary rifle. <laughs> Uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, Did that kid have a British accent? Um, I'm See not how sure. They I'm together. Was... Maybe not. I I don't know. I, I'd have to listen to it again. I have I have the audio off while I'm watching. <laughs> Chief, your blood blood pressure is too high. It's too damn high. Dude, why so can't speaking, our planet have rings? It's like the coolest dude, shit Dude, that'd ever. be so cool. That would be badass. Um, so I need to correct something that I said on episode one, where I was reading one of the descriptions, and the description actually said that Chief's homeworld was Reach. And I was like, that seems kind of weird that they would change that when like, you could just make him be from Iridanus too. But this episode, I guess... Con, you know, contradicts that text for the first episode. Um, maybe it was worse worded wrong, and I misinterpreted it. But I felt uh, obligated to, um, you know, make note of it for our our listeners keeping score. 
Well, they're not really supposed to know what planet they were brought up on. Oh, right. What does that tell, like, a plague with no cure? I really don't think it's the flood if that's where you're going. I don't think so, but every time in Halo I th- where they say plague, I'm just like, oh, shit. Oh, no. I mean, it's not Halo without the flood. So, like, they're definitely coming. But I just don't see... Th- the parallel there just yet i feel like the flood is something we de- will you know we may see like season two time frame to really oh, that, like that's gonna be it. great i can't wait to see the flood holy shit i have a theory that like basically at the end of this season chief will get stuck on the ring and it'll kind of be like a not like a retelling of ce but it'll just be like the silver timelines version of ce of him that fighting would... on on the ring and like saving marines, fighting elites, fighting the flood, like I mean, I'm I'd be perfectly happy if it's all new stuff, but like it basically kind of captures what you know CE at least was. Like I'm all for. But uh But yeah, I, I think it's just, you know, a uh, sickness just spread through the planet and uh you know like chernobyl or something chernobyl wasn't a sickness what are you talking that wasn't a yeah it wasn't a sickness but like it was it was uh you know quarantined and all that and they basically i mean that's what they said right the planet is uninhabitable yeah speaking of which do you think uh the chernobyl series on hbo is gonna get a season two i can't wait (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you're you're gonna be waiting for a long time i feel damn but you know what you can watch halo while you wait Venture. Do you think Soren actually cares about the money, or is he just, like, kind of tickled by this girl's determination? I had that same thought, um, or same question, and honestly, I feel like he he sees it as Quan is being annoying, and if she really wants to get off and I can get money out of it, then it's a win-win. I can get money, and I can get rid of her. And then at the very end there, he says it's a win-win either way, because if you're wrong and lying, like, I'll just get the bounty money and turn you over. And, and, you know, that way, again, I kind of get rid of you. Also, you know, Soren doesn't have anything better to do. (laughs) Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, he's literally just being a... Like a shipping operations manager with all his pirated gear and chickens, like you know, he needs he needs some call to action. So I think I think in see in episode four, like they're gonna get to Madrigal and something's gonna happen, and and like Soren's gonna have some form of obligation. He's going to feel the call of duty. He's gonna yes. Do He's going to feel, he's going to answer the call. I love Miranda. She's great. Miranda's great. I'm, I'm liking, I like the changes. Um, I'm good with them. Key, keys on the other hand, I'm not, I'm not impressed with yet. And I think it's just because he's kind of getting sidelined for all the other characters, but like, I don't know. He kind of has a, has a little bit of a voice of reason, a little bit of like, I'm here to kind of help you since I'm your dad. Well, he's also a naval guy, right? So you're not going to see him in action until there's some kind of ship fight. Yeah. 
So I, I just think he had a strong a strong introduction, and we just haven't really seen anything yet. And I hope to see something once I guess stuff starts hitting the fan. See, I like. I feel like Silver Team should be here, but I guess there's something that's going to happen in episode four that is why they stayed on Reach. But I don't know. I kind of. I think that's just what I want. But like, you know, Chief leaves Blue Team all the time, and you know, we play like a whole bunch of games with, <laughs> without Blue Team. Yeah. So I guess it's common for him to just do his own thing. I don't know. It would have been nice to see them though. Everyone's like out, like I'm. We're all going on an adventure. <laughs> oh, I just, I just put this two together. So McKee is going to Madrigal, and so are Soren and um, Quan. So yeah, I don't know why I didn't put this together at first, but yeah, they're totally gonna like meet. So there's definitely gonna be some action next episode with uh, the Covenant on Madrigal again. Well, it just depends, like. I'm not sure, because McKee's whole thing is, like, I can move among the humans, so is she going to join them? Because they she finds out that they know John, and, like, yeah. just kind of, like, be undercover with them until he she can find him? I think that's possible. I think I think it could, it could become a thing, like, maybe, like, some type of fight breaks out, and, and, uh, she, she basically kind of does what she did on the ship, where she aligns herself with the, with the other humans and then she finds Quan and Soren and then now she's like an undercover spy for the cover covenant and through the conversations you know you know maybe she see she you know she'll see Soren's chess piece as being a former Spartan you know as a former yeah, demon be like cool I'll hang you know? out with these guys this guy knows where the real demon is so I think there's uh, I think there's some legs with that theory. It'll be interesting. I, I do like how they've kind of humanized the Covenant by just having a human in there. I think that was an interesting uh, decision on their part. I mean, I think it's just easier for us to relate with the Covenant because we're watching McKee do things instead of just listening to the prophets float in their chairs and preach about the great journey, like... I think as a as a TV show type of uh, narrative, I think that's more interesting because, like in a video game, it's 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 very easy for those people to you know for the Sangshayun to just preach all the badness, and then you're like, all right, cool, I'm gonna go kill those guys. You know, that's <laughs> like the whole point of like a bad guy speech, just so you can go and all right, now I'm gonna go fight my way towards Eshiram and all that. But like having having McKee and having they're all their conversations and their motivations and and all and their character it, i don't know it, make, it makes it more interesting for us to watch i think definitely well that was that was the episode um right it ended at the same time that it did for me yeah 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 okay just just checking yeah that, that um, was definitely an episode that was definitely the episode um so three three episodes in chris the like how how are you liking how are you disliking the the kind of show overall and we touched on it a little bit of what we think's to come but what are you looking forward to as the series progress we're, we're one third of the way through the season there's nine total episodes oh that's crazy um i really like it i like uh it feels like after this episode all of the players are now in the game so we've set up everyone, everyone's here, now we can actually go straight into the story. Because the first three episodes were kind of world-building episodes, right? Like, here are these guys, here are these guys, this is what they want, this is what they're trying to do. And so the last person to be introduced was obviously Cortana, and now everyone's like, alright, we're gonna go do the thing. So now we get to watch them do the things. Yeah, that's a, that's a good way to put it. My only gripe with the series is, and it's just like an overall gripe with the series, and it's just like, why did it have to be a Master Chief story? Because it, it's a Master Chief story, they had to create this whole separate timeline for it to make sense, and now we have 
two timelines in Halo. <laughs> but it's all right, you know. We it's you good. got yeah. you got this show to talk about this timeline, and we got fourteen other shows to talk about the other stuff. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, it did. It's definitely like this was the best option when they decided that it had to be a Master Chief story. Because the current timeline is just way too messy for them to actually have a story in there. So, I mean, this was the best option for them. But it's still like, oh, it's it's a little messy. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, actually, that is from the silver timeline. It's like, now I have read, like, 30 plus books. And now I have to learn an entirely separate universe <laughs> to understand Halo. <laughs> Yeah, but you get to you get to take those thirty books and those you know ten games or whatever to kind of I don't know get get a little bit of a informed uh, idea of where the show's going and and the kind of directions that they're taking. Like I'm I'm definitely having fun kind of learning something new because if it did take place in kind of the pre Covenant. Uh, or I guess, you know, the pre-Halo 1 game timeline, and it wasn't even a Chief story, then I'd be constantly trying to figure out, all right, how is this connected? Does this match up? Like, what was going on in the universe during this episode versus that episode? And it, it would be a different type of conversation as opposed to, okay, all right, so this is what happened. This is how they, this is how it deviates from the, the core canon. And let's let's see what the payoff is. Let's see if it's receptive or if it's going to fall flat and it's nice to come into halo just literally not knowing anything like you can't come into this show with any preconceived notions about character backgrounds and how they're going to act and how things work right i mean you know the very very basic level of kind of what's going on in the series but when it comes to specific characters and events and stuff it's like i don't know what's gonna happen yeah yep 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 uh, all right. Well, shall we? Shall we end it there? Sure. Yes, we shall. If um, if you're interested, Krista, because I don't think you've seen these, and the listener, like I talked about in kind of the middle of the show, there, Paramount Plus produces a Halo After Show segment called Halo: The Series Declassified, that releases with each TV episode. And so for this week for Emergence. The, uh, the host, Sydney Goodman, she does an interview with Charlie Murphy, who portrays McKee. She talks about learning saying Healy and more about her role and how unique it is in the Halo universe. Uh, the, the episode also features um, the 405th Halo cosplayers. Ooh. Right? Is that, what, is that what they are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they're called. Sorry, I, I get them confused. And there's also that, like, there's that Star Wars company as well. 501st. That's like, yeah, that's what, okay, 504. Okay, so the 405th are the Halo cosplayers. So they talk about, you know, their armor and the camaraderie and the fans, and it's all it's all cool. I've seen them a few times at, like, Outpost Discovery. I think you've, you've experienced that as well over mm-hmm. in Orlando. Yeah, yeah. So cool stuff behind there. And there's also some behind the scenes with the director, production designer, costume designer as well. And, yeah, I, I definitely recommend watching the episode three um, behind the scenes. I think each one has kind of increasingly been a little bit more entertaining to kind of watch now that more of the episodes have been released. We also get some like sneak peeks to some, you know, behind the scenes of, of scenes we haven't even seen yet. So it's kind of cool to speculate a little bit about what's to come. So you can check those out. And, uh, and I think with that, Krista, thank you for joining me. Oh, it's been fun. It's been great. We will come back in just a little while. So sit tight, listeners, and thank you for listening and joining us for the commentary of Episode 3, Emergence. Halo the Series premieres exclusively on Paramount Plus every Thursday morning at midnight Pacific time. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, you can find every episode to all of Evolve's show, including Halo TV Plus on EvolvedHalo.com. It also features links to our Discord server, Patreon page, Xbox Live Club, and other contact methods. Once again, another special shout out to all of our patrons. Thank you guys so much for supporting Evolved and making all of our shows possible across the board. You can head over to patreon.com slash Halo Evolved to learn more. 
And finally, if you want to leave us an email or a voicemail about this week's episode of Halo the Series, you can email us at podcastevolved at gmail.com or you can call us at 205-EVOLVED, which is 205-386-5833. And with that, I have been your host, Oren, and until next time, Evolved!